Well, that does it for this week's tie-in film. Who knows what'll happen next time? It's a Spider-Man tie-in episode. So, let's flip a coin. Heads, porno spoof, tails, foreign knockoff film. Hmm. Well, I guess we're watching Spider-Man Triple X, but I'm not giving it that title! Once again, they're nice enough to tell us that a movie called Spider-Man Triple X is a porn parody. Thank you. I thought the Triple X was there to tell me that it's a crossover with Xander Cage. From now on, the name of this movie is Spanker Man. I don't even know if it has any spanking in it, but you know what? At least that's a proper title. Look at it like this. If someone were to ask me if I'd like to watch a movie called Forrest Gump, a triple X parody, my answer would be... But if you asked me if I wanted to watch a movie called Foreskin Gump, my answer would still be no, but at least I wouldn't forget that title, especially considering how I've already seen that movie. Spanker Man pits our friendly neighborhood Spanker against the evil Electro and Kingpin, with a little help from Black Widow. Jesus, how did Sony and Marvel ever come to an agreement on that? The movie is directed by Axel Braun, who brought us The Smuffs, previously known as This Ain't a Fucking Title. It's also co-written by Bryn Pryor, who moonlights as 50-year-old Brad Jones. Rest assured, if this movie deviates from the source material, I am going to go about my day. Hey, you're getting your Sin City porno in my Spider-Man porno! Or is this a spirit porno? That movie did have Nick Fury and Black Widow in it. If this guy is trying to cut off the power to keep me from watching this, then sucks for him, I can watch it on my laptop. My day will always remain sad. I guess this is Electro. Stupid opening. It should be more realistic, with Electro falling into a vat of eels. We immediately jump to the opening credits, because God forbid our lead is in the opening scene. I would read you these credits, but I'm not laying on my side. Christ, it looks like a numbers montage from A Beautiful Mind. Oh wait, this I can read. They got Peter O'Toole in it? Finally! He's returning to his porno roots! Meanwhile, Lay Jonah Jameson really wants dick pics of Spider-Man! Ah, bullshit, Robbie! Craven tried to rid this city of a pest, and Spider-Man set him up! That man's a hero! Well, you also say that Nixon was misunderstood. Hmm, topical. Hooroo! And there's Peter Parker, just standing off to the side. Even the porno spoofs are putting too much emphasis on the villains. Peter is played by Xander Corvus, whose name just sounds like his balls drip axe body spray. Alright, so catch me up on the plot here. But, uh, I got a funeral to get to. Norman Osborn, you're friends with the sun. I guess pictures would be declassé. If I want to see characters in backstory introduced this clumsily, I'd stick with Gladiformers, thank you very much. Although there is one thing this movie has that Gladiformers doesn't. Sexual harassment? Too subtle. Robbie Robertson fucking Betty Black! Which is poor casting, because he looks nothing like the lead guitarist and songwriter for the band. Take a load off, Betty, and blow your load right on me. Like all great pornos, it goes from sex scene to funeral scene. Gwen Stacy and Harry look so young, they look like they're about to attend their 20th high school reunion. Harry and Peter look so much alike that it takes me until halfway through a scene before I realize it's Peter. Hello, dear. How are Harry and Liz? So whose grandmother did they get to play Aunt May by convincing her this is a real Spider-Man movie? But this Aunt May is also a matchmaker. I remember Harry Osborn. Hello. Peter, don't you remember Mary Jane Watson? She used to live next door. 
face to beat you up. Funeral schmuneral? Time to fuck Mary Jane! And let's not forget about the most important character. Mary Jane's back in town, finishing her master's at ESU. I told her she could stay here. I expect you to show around town. I'm guessing it's the soundtrack that's the most important character, because it's the only thing I can hear. Meanwhile, Electro fucks a hooker to death for 20 minutes. I can't show you the scene where his acidy semen causes CGI smoke to come from her stomach, so here's the gut puking scene from City of the Living Dead. <laughs> It's okay, I won't judge you if you need to jerk off, creep. And in case you didn't know this was Electro... You can call me Electro. My name is Wilson Fisk. Hmm, Robbie Robertson has a way bigger lightning bolt than you. He gets a visit from King Hippo, I mean Kingpin, who wants to discuss the business of business business. And wait a minute, this isn't the same Peter O'Toole from Lawrence of Arabia? I no longer feel like I'm watching a classic. Oh, hey, Spanker Man, I forgot you were in this. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. That's not his spider sense, it's a brain tumor. Ah, uh, funerals, rape scenes, this movie's as hot as it gets. At least it's not three Dev Adam where it was Spider-Man doing the raping. Here, he fights people like in the movies. Back off, I'm gonna cut this bitch's throat. Oh. Not bad. At least now we know it's the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, so the whole movie won't just be a giant setup for a Sinister Six movie that never happens. Oh, and yeah, they start 69ing. So that's why this movie won Best 69ing at the MTV Movie Awards. It had to compete against Drumline. I don't even remember that scene! Rock, rock, Well, this is gonna be awkward when Peter returns. Hey, sorry about that. Dazzler found my phone and security was just, you know, hassling me. No worries. So, we got it though, so that's... He knows that you just blew Spider-Man. Meanwhile, in the dead hooker plotline... You ever thought of grounding yourself? What? You know, wrap a wire around your ankle to drain the power out. So you don't leave a trail of dead hookers in your wake. Is this movie confusing Electro with Ramrod from Vice Squad? Honest mistake. He's gotta hurry and get back into costume. He needs to look like wallpaper peeled from a 90s skate land immediately. And about those dick pics of Spider-Man! I'm like the spring. I always come back. Yeah, so does Herpes. Now go do your job. Electro's back. And I need pics of him beating Spider-Man. Well, he's got a sex tape of Spider-Man getting a blowjob. That should sell some papers. Now to track down the baby powder bandit. Someone's been stealing the town's baby powder and using it for their hair. And I think it's Robbie. Peter and Mary have a double date with Flash and Gwen. I guess they went to a movie or something. Was the girl supposed to turn into a swan or...? <laughs> No. I still can't believe I got him to go to a movie about ballet dancers. <laughs> that one chick going on the other chick, though? That was hot. Yeah, it was. Hey, I know what movie they're describing. I love Frozen! This double date is really awkward. Peter hasn't seen Gwen since he killed her. Then all of the lights in the background go out, except for the stage lights. As Peter goes off to check on Aunt May, Gwen, Flash, and Mary Jane attempt a porno spoof of Ouija. I'm just gonna sit over here. Or they just fuck. This Mary Jane has been passed to everyone but Peter. Wait a minute. Peter Parker is Spider-Man! Damn, we spent so long with the threesome that we didn't get to see Electro play the Spider-Man theme at a substation. But we do get to see some spider action. 
Go, moron. I'll deal with spider fuck. Eh, better CGI than the 2002 Spider-Man. He defeats Electro by giving him the sex move known as the Spider-Man. You don't know the Spider-Man? It's when you have a handful of cum, you thwip it in the girl's face, shout, You've been whammed, bitch! And then jump out the window. Alright, Black Widow is in this for some reason. Spider-Man. Hey, I know you. You're, uh, Hawkeye's girlfriend, right? All oh, right, I forgot Hawkeye was the Hulk. They begin talking about classified information involving the real villain, Kingpin. Not that any of that matters. We all know this is gonna end with that classic meme of Black Widow blowing Spider-Man under a desk. Now that another 20-minute sex scene is over, oh my god, he found Captain Turkish America's shield! And to put it in Axel Braun terms, this ain't the only sequel baiting scene. Good afternoon. I understand you have a room for rent? Pleased to meet you. You're very kind, my dear. The name's Octavius. Dr. Otto. I could show you more, but that's the end of the movie. No post credit scene, or any end credits in general. Just a setup for Doc Ock, who along with Captain America, is nowhere to be found in Spanker Man 2. That's like if they made an Amazing Spider-Man 3, and Rhino wasn't in it. Or Spider-Man! I guess this is a good tie-in with Spider-Man Homecoming. It did have a home in it, and it did have coming. It's nice to be back to doing tie-in episodes on the week that the movie comes out. Because of the 10th anniversary episodes, it threw off my schedule so much that I've been having to do the tie-in episodes on the Monday after the new releases. And there's been so many goddamn blockbusters this season that it's taken until now to catch up. Ugh. Well, I've got time to kill, so... What are your thoughts, Eddie from Rosie Rabbit? Snob, I don't like the porno spoofs anymore. They're just low-hanging fruit. Go back to reviewing Oscar contenders like slasher films and Italian exploitation films. Alright, I'll get back to the hard-hitting movies like Tarzan the Ape Man. Shouldn't you be watching your weird internet porn? Ugh, I'm scared. As host of Will It Fit, I need to remind the audience not to try fitting this at home. I've been practicing power fitting for years, as I come from many generations of fitters. Now hand me that replica of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> How does he do it? I can't even fit a light bulb. <laughs> I need a glass of whiskey and a fucking shotgun. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stonedgremlinproductions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob, or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com. And you guessed correctly, I am a little drunk.